<laughs> so talk to me about the excitement coming to the World Cup. Like to have it here, what does it mean to you as the mayor? You know, I describe it as having multiple Super Bowls here in the same city. We have six big matches. We have the men's uh, team that are just world class. We get to show to billions of people what we have here in Seattle, not just athletically, but the people, the businesses, the community. So we'll be a world citizen. And, you know, my job as mayor to make sure that we're safe and the transportation solutions are there. But we are so excited about the FIFA games. So talk about a game plan going into it. You talk about transportation. You talk about security. Just like what all conversations have you been having with, you know, Chief Diaz and the Department of Transportation, all that. Because two years, it may seem like a while, but it's actually quicker than we think. No, this kind of planning is, uh, is critical. So a few things we're doing. The local uh, organizing committee here, we have local leaders here that are part of the FIFA structure. So they will make sure they're coordinating everything. And through those efforts, I met with the host cities, uh, 10 plus other cities of, with their mayors on what they're gonna do. So we'll steal the best ideas around in terms of what it should look like. Now we're gonna look at pedestrian access around the stadium, around Lumen Fields. We're gonna make sure that our waterfront is ready by 2025, a lot of greenery, Again, a lot of pedestrian access. Um, we're looking at where we're improving other fields, and so we're making sure, again, that um, both from a traffic calming standpoint and all of our capital investments that people can get around. Wayfinding is going to be critical. We understand many people may not even speak English uh, barely, and so we have to make it very accessible to people. Public safety, you know, we're increasing our numbers in the public safety department. We realize there could always be public safety concerns. So again, we have interdepartmental teams work with our local organizing committee to make sure this is a huge success. And I think during the Major League Baseball All-Star game, I think we showed what we can do when we have a sense of purpose and urgency. And you're gonna see that on steroids, so to speak, for the FIFA games. And just where the game's gonna be played at Lumen Field, you know, that's a very heavy traffic area already. And you know, as mayor, you've dealt with a lot in your time here, you know, with the fentanyl crisis, the homeless crisis, you know, how do you tackle those issues going into this with the world's eye on us? How do we tackle that? Well, first of all, I have looked at cities like Portland and Los Angeles where um, their problems of public safety and RV encampments and people living in tents are critically, uh, well, I should say they're exacerbated. So we realize we have to get people shelter. We have to remove RVs to get them to lots where they can get help. Um, and so this gives us, quite frankly, a, a heightened sense of appreciation of what we have to do. Um, we want to show the world that we are a compassionate city, um, that we realize people right now, they need to be sheltered. And quite candidly, we like tourism and we like out-of-state dollars to come in and we want them to be able to spend money so it's a and, and that tax revenue that we get allows us to shelter and help people in other aspects of life so um, we will move ahead to make sure we're getting people sheltered make sure that it's clean and uh, we will continue to learn uh, through other cities what they're going to do as well do you think there'll be more encampment clear outs in that area as we build up to these games or what, 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 what would you say to that I will say we have a very transparent plan on our website and we don't remove or let people stay in just sort of arbitrarily. We have a criteria by which we look at where we are removing encampments. We have policies in place to make sure we offer everyone housing first. So none of that will change. Uh, but we have to do recognize that in certain areas of the city during FIFA games there's going to be a high concentration of visitors. But our strategy is a solid strategy. It's a transparent strategy on the website. We talk openly about where we have areas of concern. And, and if you see under our leadership, you literally see the tremendous progress we've made. Am I happy with where we are? No. You, you, I tell people, you don't want a mayor that's happy with the conditions that we see. When I walk downtown and I see people that are, have no hope and living lives of despair, it makes me cringe because I have to figure out a way to get them treatment and to clean up our streets. And so that's the work we're doing. I'm very bullish about our downtown area and it will continue to be. Now, when it comes to, I don't know if you've ever been around international soccer. Have you ever been around international soccer, like a World Cup game or uh, international friendly, anything like that? I watch as much as I can on TV. I enjoy the CONCACAF games and I understand, and I have an appreciation for this world sport. Now, what was the follow-up question? The follow-up question is, is there nerves dealing with soccer fans, say from Germany, England, Brazil, 
Argentina, big yeah. soccer countries. Well, in all seriousness, that I never had an appreciation for the international sport growing up as a child. And as I matured, I realized the intensity of these world games. I look at from, from, from South Africa to Europe to, to America, the intensity. And psychologists will talk about what soccer does to tap into uh, a, a, a person's sense of belonging and competitiveness. And so this will, again, allow us to understand how prideful people are of their teams. And how do we use that pride to continue to be a world, uh, a world citizen, realize that at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I know I get a little corny when I say this, but that's what's why Seattle is very special. And I think that in two years, dealing with all of the world conflict that we have, I hope we're able to tell the story here about how we are a world citizen, that we love our country and we love this city, but we don't hate anyone else out there in terms of how we approach this game. And that is the beauty of sport. That's what sports can bring out in us. Do you plan to go to any of the games here? I plan on going to many of the games. I'm just going to tell you right now, as a guy who's a soccer fan and has been around international fan, it's, it's going to be a treat for you. But yeah. for me, when it comes to this, you know, say after, say after all these games, do you think with people coming to Seattle that more, there could, there could be more growth after the World Cup? I think there will be, and one of the, just as we did for the uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game, we're going to see lasting legacy projects here because of the games. And so we want to tell the stories about the different teams. So if they come back here and they, whether they choose to live here or work here, they will see remnants of the FIFA games in 2026. So, and, and in the planning, I'm making that crystal clear that I don't want it to be like the carnival that came to the city and then they left and they took the tents and everyone and there was no signs of it. So we're going to look at the lasting legacy of this, this great experience. <laughs> so one of the beauties of having the FIFA games here is by the time they are here, we should have 20 new acres of park around the waterfront. We should have a walkable and accessible uh, trail, if you will, from the Pike Place Market down to the walker, waterfront. And you'll see north of the uh, waterfront area around the Myrtle Edwards Park. Again, we were able to achieve about 40 to 50 million dollars of private money for an investment. So you're going to have access to the water, beach types of access, all in preparation for these games. And so we will open up our waterfront. That's the beauty of what we're doing. This is a multi-billion dollar investment that uh, all around the state uh, has made into our waterfront. Now we're going to show it off for billions of people and going to hopefully win some games, uh, the United States will hopefully win some mini games. I don't know if you want to be the city where the United States may lose a game in the group stage. How do you get over that if that happens? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you stumped me on the answer on that one. And I, but I always say this one, I never see defeat in anything that I do. And for me, I don't know if, we, if you've heard about this Warner Brothers, Fox, and Disney merger with the streaming platforms where there's going to be now potentially even more eyes on all the games in the World Cup in 2026, especially here in Seattle. Is there nerves with you when it comes to more eyes seeing our city? Well, you're talking to someone that at 20 years old played in front of millions and millions of people on football fields and, 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 and are pretty competitive. So I don't respond negatively to pressure. I welcome it. So let's get our house in order. Let's take care of the people that live here and work here. That's my highest priority. And to make sure that we are ready um, to show off this city to the world.